So this morning, we begin our new three-week series, which we call, anybody? Baggage, Baggage, right? We're talking about the baggage we have in our lives. Someone said, are you going to be cheesy this week and bring a bunch of suitcases up on the stage? I said, no, but I will bring a bunch of duffel bags on the stage because they are a great illustration for what we carry around in our lives. We all carry baggage. Far too many of us. Far too many. I'm going to trip over these if I don't get them out of the way. Far, far too many. That would be a great illustration because we trip over baggage. Wow, that just hit me. And that's the reason for this series. As a pastor, I spend my time preaching the gospel and I spend my time working with people. And I come across everyone that I talk to and the baggage that they carry in their life plays such a role in weighing down their life. I'm a human being, so I know the impact of baggage in my own life. And the problem is all this baggage that we carry in our lives, it slows us down in the journey that God has for us. Now, anyone who's traveled with a lot of baggage, you know that it's not a pleasant experience. Anybody here an overpacker? Yes, I am a consistent overpacker. Consistent overpacker. And so I always pack a lot anyway. But if you're a family that's large, you know how unpleasant it is to have lots of baggage when you travel. You're slow, you're tired, and everything is just way more complicated. Now, in my family, we, we travel with a lot of bags. Uh, we are a family of six. And so when we travel, uh, it is quite the production. I remember one trip where we went down to New Orleans to visit my wife's family. Uh, we had 10 bags, 10. And that wasn't counting our personal items. And I still remember that trip because the driver that picked us up on the way home, they miscommunicated and they picked us up in a mini SUV. So imagine including the driver, there's six of us in that car and we have 10 suitcases. It was a long, long trip home, but we got it all in. All of us, all of our bags crammed in there. The only thing that there did not get packed was the joy of the Lord. That got left at the airport. <laughs> it was... It was um, it was, it was a rough trip. Now, I, I juxtaposed that with the time. I remember the first time that I flew by myself after we had kids. Um, I flew to Maui for my brother's wedding. And, uh, and I had one suitcase uh, and a carry-on. And everything just moved so much faster. Everything was so much simpler Everything was just at ease. It was easier. In fact, I remember telling my wife, who I left at home with all our three children, five and under, um, because we had just moved to New Jersey and we didn't know anybody to watch them, not because I'm a horrible husband, just to be clear. Still owe her to a trip to Maui. Just I remember that, honey, if you're watching at home. And, and I could hear the, scream, the kids screaming as I was telling her what an easy trip it was. Now, I still went through the normal frustrations and hassles of travel, but man, my, my attitude was so much better. Things were so much easier. I even remember as I was getting on the plane, just saying, Lord, I pray whoever you sit me next to, uh, I pray I have an opportunity to share Jesus with. Let me tell you, that was a much different prayer I prayed than the time we flew, all of us with 10 bags. That was a much, Lord, help us survive. That was my prayer that day. Now, my, my illustration here is, is not to say uh, that traveling with a large family is horrible. Um, because I'm probably giving Evan emotional baggage there sitting in the back listening to this. My point is that the amount of baggage that we travel with, it matters in our lives. And sometimes when we talk about phrases like emotional baggage, it's, it's an abstract idea. And so I'm trying to use this illustration to give it an idea that a lot of us are carrying through our lives things from our past that are just like these bugs. And they weigh us down, they slow us down, they steal the joy of the Lord that we have in us. They're bags that are filled with shame. They're filled with regret. They're filled with insecurity, guilt, with fear, with anxiety, with resentment. They're filled with anger. They're filled with bitterness. Those are some heavy words, aren't they? These are the kind of things that we carry in our lives. And they stem from things that we've done or not done, or they stem from things other people have done to us or not done for us. 
They can be from recent time, or they can come all the way back from our childhood. I've been reading a book uh, called Bags from a pastor, and it's about all the emotional bags that kids pack growing up and the negative effect that it has on their lives and what, what parents can do to help those kids unpack those bags to make sure that their identity is in Jesus Christ. But even, especially if you've been a parent, you know this, as parents, we get it wrong from time to time. So I even know any teenagers that are listening, you have bags that you're carrying around as well. Even if it's not from your parents, I went to high school and I know times have changed, but I know what has not changed is the constant rut every day of being compared at school. And now with social media, it being so much worse. And the, and, and the reports that I read about teenage depression, we all carry baggage. It's just whether we pay attention to it or not. And men, you need to wake up the most to this message because I find in my, and I don't mean to stereotype, but I'm going to a little bit. In my experience, I find the ladies, they understand their baggage a lot more. It doesn't mean that they respond to it the way they should, but they know that it's there. Men, we just ignore it completely. We ignore it completely. We turn it off. We dismiss it. We don't even look at it. But I guarantee you, so many men that I've met that are emotionally closed off to those around them, it's because of the bags they carry. And so my prayer is during this message, because it's a bit abstract, is that you will ask the Lord, help me to know what bags I got in my life. Because there's everything negative in us stems from these bags that we carry and our poor response to them. Now, just like bags, they come in all different, you know, like suitcases, all different shapes and sizes. And so I'm going to give you some examples because I said this is very abstract. And so I want to give you some examples to latch on to. Some bags look like this, that we're controlled by the memories of the past. Our joy and our happiness in the present will always be overshadowed by the pain of the past if it, a memory pops up. It robs it. It takes us. We have an inability to forgive people. We may say, oh, I forgive them, but we still hold grudges. Our priority in life is often protecting ourselves from getting hurt. Rather than being concerned to being obedient to the word of God, we're constantly in a state of protecting ourselves. We're hesitant to step out in faith if God calls us to do something because we think we're different than everyone else. There's an insecurity in us that the promises that are preached about in the Bible, they apply to everybody else except us. We never say this out loud, but we say it by the way that we live our lives. Another bag is, is, is we can't handle criticism. We, we get defensive even in the most minor corrections. We're easily offended. We have very, very thin skin. We're quick to get angry. We're quick to get hurt. Some of the bags we have are relational. Because our bags, they don't just affect us. They affect everybody around us. We cut people off quickly in our lives who we think might hurt us. We'll push them away or withdraw away from them. People struggle to ever have a real relationship with us. Hey, Evan, come up here for a minute. Come here, buddy. Everybody say hi, Evan. Hi. This is my kid. No, don't do the thing where you put your arm on me. And, yeah, yeah, I felt it. Yeah, he knows. So here's what we do is when people, when we have bags in our lives, people never get an opportunity to have a real relationship with us. Like, stack these bags in my arm for me. Throw them up there. There, put them in there. Let's just go with three. 
I feel like three is going to get the point. <laughs> Sorry, listen, we're having a little fun right now, but this is what it looks like. When you have these emotional bags in your life, if I didn't know Evan and we were getting ready to have a relationship to get to know each other, he can never get to me because of all the bags that I have in my life, the shame, the hurt, the bitterness, the anger, the unforgiveness, it creates a wall. He can't see me. Everything, we try to talk to each other and it's muffled by the bags that are in front of us. Some of you, this is what you're walking through life like. Or for other people, sometimes when they get to know us, we, we have no choice. You know, family or coworkers, people we have to, you know, to, to have relationship with. They get to know us, they get to see us just by the amount of time together. But this is what happens. They don't get just us, they get our bags. And so we say, hey, here we go. We're gonna have a relationship together, but you gotta take all of this stuff as well. You have to take it all, right? <laughs> I'm gonna help you out here, okay? Once again, we're having fun. But when we don't work through the baggage that we have and let it go, this is what we do to people. We dump all of our baggage on them. We force them to carry our bags with us. And listen, and this is parents, especially for you. When you don't deal with the baggage in your life, when you don't let go, this is what you do to your children. You give them your bags. You give that to them. And now, now prayerfully in Jesus Christ, they find freedom and they're able to drop all of these bags. But far too often I meet with kids, I meet with teens when I was a youth pastor, I meet with adults still now, and they carry the bags from their parents because their parents never let them go. Do you hear me this morning, church? I am trying to give you a physical illustration of how critical it is that we let go of the bags in our life. You good over there? All right, thanks, buddy. You got some slides coming up, so I'm gonna let you go. And, and I was thinking this week as I was working on this message, that clapping was for me, Evan, not you. I was thinking this week as I was working on my message, I'm like, God, whatever bags I got in my life, I pray I don't pass them on to my kids. And then it was scary because he showed me a couple bags I have in my life. And listen, I, I just, I'm trying to hit this home because some of us are so blind to the baggage that we have. Especially, like I said, in my experience, it's the men who close their eyes the most. We're so blind to the baggage that we are carrying around. The shame, the insecurity, the regret, the anger, and the bitterness. And we need to wake up. We don't realize how much is on the line. Now, the good news is we have freedom in Jesus. That's why we sang what we sang this morning. That's why we celebrate Christmas. There is freedom from all of this. With Jesus, we have the ability to let the bags go. Let me read Psalm 103 to you. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in with, within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, and who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Ooh, that's a good passage. Can I get an amen to that one? Amen. Especially verse four. Who redeems your life from the pit? Man, and I tell you, if there was ever an illustration from what it's like to live with all of this baggage, it is like being stuck in a pit. But the psalmist says that it's God who redeems us from the pit. Notice that. He doesn't say you climb the way out. It says he gets you out. That gives me hope this morning. That gives me hope this morning. Because I know I can't do it myself. Now, how does he do it? Through the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Let's go to Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. What does Jesus say? He says, come to me, all who will labor and heavy laden, and I will give you what, church? 
rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, when Jesus said this, he was talking to people who were under this burden of earning their way to God, of, of, of pulling themselves out of their own pit, so to speak. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. That's not the way to God. You, you don't have to go to God. You don't have to climb out of the pit to find him. God comes to you. He comes to you. Through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ by faith, he pulls you out. But that's just not it. He doesn't pull you out and just leave you and be like, good, you're on your way. He gives you the power of the Holy Spirit as we read in Scripture so that you don't fall back into that pit. So that you have a new voice speaking into your life. And and, and through his Holy Spirit and through his word, you begin to grasp that your love and and your worth, it's not in the pain of the past. It's not in what was in the pit or the fact that you fell in the pit in the first place that you began to grasp that your destiny is not in your hands or the hands of anybody else, but it's in the hands of the Father in heaven. So you don't have to live in fear. And you begin to grasp the promise of heaven where one day all the pain of your past will be gone. All the pain of your present will be gone. And all the pain that's coming your way in the future will be gone. Just like we're going to talk about in our next series, Revelation 21 says he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. And when you begin to grasp this in your life, when that's what you begin to hold on to, it changes how you see all of your baggage. Paul in Romans 8, he says, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. You realize, man, all my pain, all my hurt, it, 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 and consider of all of eternity, it's, that's how long it lasts. That's what it is compared to eternity. You start to see it because without that eternal view in life, and this is what a lot of us need is an eternal view of life, the pain seems big. It seems never ending. It seems all encompassing. It seems like this heavy weight. But when you compare it to eternity, man, it's nothing. It's a blink of the eye. And that leads you to a place where you're like, man, these aren't me. These happened to me, or I did these to me, but these are not me. Because of Jesus, all of these other things are true. And so I can let these bags go. Philippians 4. Paul again, he says, I learned in whatever situation to be content. Writing this from prison. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. And in every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. We all know this one, right? I can do all things through him who strengthens me. That means whatever bags I'm holding on to so tightly in my life, carrying around, weighing me down, feel like I can never let go with his strength, his strength, looking to him, I can set him down. And I don't need to pick them back up. Are you hearing me this morning, church? Amen. I cannot tell you the man that I would be today if these truths were not true. If I could not sit down, I've had a lot of bags in my life like you, and if it wasn't for Jesus, I would still be carrying them, and I'd be a very different man than I am today. I ain't perfect. I ain't there yet. But he has redeemed me from so many bags in my life. And my only wish was that I would have dropped them sooner. I'm living and walking proof. And as I've gotten to know a lot of you, you are living walking proof at the power of Jesus to help you let those bags go in your life. But for my Christian friends here today, For people who say, I've put my faith and my trust in Jesus. He is my Savior and my Lord. I have a question. I want you to hear this. How is it possible 
for everything I have said to be true. And for us who claim to be Christians to still walk around with the hurt from our past, to walk around with all this baggage. How's it, how's it possible? I'm going to tell you one reason it's possible. Because we as Christians... rather protect ourselves, rather hold on to our bags than live out the gospel, right? The gospel. We are separated from God by our sin. We are lost in our identity and our worth from God. Jesus comes to earth, dies for our sin, makes a way that we can have a relationship with our Father in heaven and find identity and purpose and hope and love to restore our lives, and the lives of those around us to how it meant to be. But we choose to protect ourselves instead. And you know why? Because it's easier. It's safer. The gospel of Jesus Christ, when you follow Jesus as your Lord, it makes you face your shame. It makes you confess and admit your shame. It makes you admit your hurt and your pain. And so far too many Christians just go, I'm fine, and leave well enough alone. While you can still see the pain and the hurt in their eyes. That's not how a Christian responds or should respond. Now that's how a non-Christian responds, and I don't mean that Uh, And I don't mean that in a mean way. I just mean it as a matter of fact. If you do not have a God in your life, the God of the Bible to look to, something greater and stronger than your pain, if you don't have an eternal perspective to look to and that you don't have one without God, then you have to protect yourself because there's no one else to trust. You can't trust anybody else. You have to protect yourself. You have to hide your weakness. But for Christians, you have something greater that we already just talked about. You have a God that is stronger, who tells you what your worth is outside of all your bags. You have a God who's given you the promise of eternity with him where where tears will be wiped away. And so because of these promises and because you trust these promises, you are called to live out the gospel. You are called to walk as somebody who really believes these things in their life. And and I don't, I want to be careful because I don't want to dismiss the baggage that we have because some of you have been betrayed in your life You have been deeply, deeply, deeply cut and hurt. Some of you have you have been abused in your life. And and I and I do not minimize that. We'll talk about this later, but I'm not talking about like it's just instant freedom. But I want you to hear this. I wrote this down because I, I, I want you to hear this. even though some of our baggage comes from people who abuse us. For you to claim to follow Jesus, to claim to believe in his death and his resurrection and the power of his Holy Spirit, and then to choose to live significantly less than what he has made you to be, all you're doing is trading one abuser for another. Did you know that? We can abuse ourselves. We can hold ourselves back from healing. We can keep ourselves in places of hurt. We can do that to ourselves. And we can do it for much longer than the original abuse ever took place. John 10.10. Jesus says this, the thief referring to the devil, Satan, the enemy. He says the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. 
He goes, I come that they may have, that we may have life and have it abundantly. Church, I want you to ask yourself, do you have abundant life in Christ? Can you say that? Now listen, that doesn't mean you walk around, you know, skipping and hopping. Everything is sunshine and rainbows and butterflies. But it means that Christ is your source in everything. Your source of strength, your source of hope, your, strong, your source of peace. And a source of, of underlying foundational joy that keeps you from falling no matter how hard the situations are. A joy and a peace and a hope that allows you to walk through these situations, to walk through these hurt, to let go of this baggage, even when it's not easy, it's not fun, and it's not comfortable. But a Christian who claims to follow Jesus does not do things because they're easy or they're comfortable. They do them because they're obedient to God and they trust in his promises. And to do anything less is to discount the finished work of our Savior. And really what it comes down to, Christians, is when we're, really, when we're not willing to set down our bags and be obedient to the word of God, at the end of the day, what we're communicating to ourselves and to those around us that we proclaim the gospel to is that his love is not strong enough, like we sang earlier, that we don't trust him. And it's sin. We don't like to use that word nowadays. We like to use like, mistakes and boo-boos and mess-ups, but it's sin. Remember what sin is? It's missing the mark, right? An archery, missing the mark, when you're a Christian and you choose not to trust God and his word, it's missing the mark. It's sin. It's sin when you don't live a life that, that believes what we read in Romans 8, 28. And we know that for those who love God, he works all things, good and bad, together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. And let me tell you, there is nothing more the enemy loves than watching us hold on to our bags. He comes to steal and destroy, as we just read. You know what the devil knows that we don't realize or think about is that we were designed to worship. We were designed to put our trust in things. And so if we don't put it into God, we're going to put it somewhere else. Some of us men, we put all our trust in our jobs, right? Some women do too. I've counseled women in the past who they put their trust in, in relationships. That's where they think they'll find peace. I have had people where they turn away from God, they put their trust in, in, in drugs and alcohol. Now they would never say that out loud, but that's where they turn to for comfort, to dull the pain. And then some people, they put trust in themselves. They put themselves above everyone else. They walk through life angry and upset. They walk through life thinking other people are the problem without realizing they're part of it because they're trusting in their perspective. They're trusting in themselves. They turn to all of this stuff to find peace and it just creates chaos. Which is funny, which is ironic because that's not how the peace of God works. God says, look, I give you peace when you let go of your bags and you hold on to me, but it doesn't mean I promise peace. It means I will give you peace among the chaos. So we get that wrong. We think that peace is the absence of chaos. No, that's not how the world works. I wish it was. Now God says, I give you the peace among the chaos. Isaiah 26, you keep him in perfect peace 
whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. He trusts in the Lord forever. For the Lord our God is an everlasting rock. Philippians 4 talks about, gives us, when we, when we take our, our, our troubles and stuff to God and we trust in him, he gives us the peace that passes all understanding, which means like the whole world could be falling apart and we're like, it may hurt, it may be hard, but there's a peace in us, a quietness. People are like, man, where does that come from? That's what it means to trust in the Lord. To say, man, I don't need these bags. God, I'm giving them to you. Whatever brings my way, whatever this opens me up to, I trust in you and your promises alone. That's it. I'm not, I'm not giving myself a choice. No if, ands, or buts. And then that means where you start working through the word of God. And we'll talk about this more in the next couple of weeks, learning how to set down those bags. There is incredible freedom waiting for some of you. Just wait. If you're willing just to trust in the Lord. So here's my prayer. My prayer this week is that you and is that you will ask the Lord throughout the entire week. So God, if I have any baggage in my life, help me to see it. I want you to be aware of yourself. When someone says something to you and, every, and, and inside you, you're like, or this like out of nowhere. You've ever felt that? When someone just said something to you and this just lion came up inside of you, this anger, pay attention to that. When, you get, when someone criticizes something just little you do and you get all defensive and you get all hurt, pay attention to that. When you feel the insecurity and the doubt come in, pay attention to that because it's the bags and, and say, Lord, where's this coming from? Help me to know. See, somebody who, who really wants to trust in the Lord, someone who really wants to obey the Lord will not listen to this message and walk out and be like, well, that was a bad message. That was a great message and go along their way. But someone who really, really wants to follow God will walk out this door and say, Lord, show me my bags. Help me to see them. I mean, I loved it last night. I was, I was, or two nights ago, I was telling Maria what I was working on. I was talking about bags and, and she was like, I wonder if I have any bags in my life. I said, well, since you've asked, you know, no, I didn't. I, didn't. I was like, honey, no, baby, you're perfect. I, but I love that that was my wife's first thought was like, do I have any bags? That's what you should be asking this morning. That, that's, you know what? And I worked on more than half this message before I asked myself that question. And I don't even think I ever asked myself my question. The Lord just said, hey, let me show you a couple of yours. And then, and then your next step, Lord, as he shows us to repent, to say, Lord, I'm sorry I'm carrying these bags. I'm sorry I'm not trusting you with them. And I'm sorry that I've carried them so long because I know what some of you are gonna do, these bags are gonna come to you, this hurt's gonna come to you, and then you're gonna add another bag. I have failed God, I've held on to them, I've destroyed my children, I'm horrible, God doesn't love me. You will just create a whole nother bag. Once again, Matthew 11, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Remember, you don't get yourself out of the pit, he does. And, and repenting is a good thing. It's not a bad thing because it reminds you that you must depend on God and his strength to let your bags go. We remember 1 John 1 night, if we are faithful and to confess our sins, he will cleanse us from all our righteousness. God don't have bags like we do. He's just waiting to help us lay down ours. And so when they come to you, uh, you repent. You say, Lord, I'm sorry I hung on to this. And then you know what you follow up with? You say, but Lord, thank you that I know now. Thank you that I know now. And I, and I pray you, you help me lay him down. Help me lay him down. And then we'll see what he does. He might point you to some scripture. He might say, hey, you know what? You need to call this person because they've had to carry your bags for so long. I don't, and you got to call me and say, you know what? I'm sorry you had to carry my bags. I'm sorry you had to carry my bags. And I don't know how to respond, but that doesn't matter. Responding and letting your bag goes means being obedient to the Lord. I've done what I can do. Lord, I, I'm sorry you had to carry my bags. I hope you forgive me. 
And then you do your best to start walking without those bags. And listen, it's a process. And we're going to talk about it over the next couple of weeks. It's not like, now you might get magical, magical, horrible world. You might get healing from the Holy Spirit right then and there. And you're like, you're sensing freedom. And those bags are just gone forever. You kick them away. You don't even see them anymore. But for some of you, you're going to carry that bag for days or for weeks or for months. And it's not going to be dropping. It's going to be a process of where you're slowly letting it down. And sometimes, you know what? It's okay because God has work in that. He has, he has, he has blessing that because you know what? Sometimes as you see people setting your down, they see you setting your bag down and they see you doing it. And they see the struggle and they still use you being obedient and faithful to God in it. What it's going to do, it's going to open a door for them to come to you and you to help them. Or is they're going to, they're going to see, okay, man, it's okay to mess up. It's okay to grab it a little bit and I can start letting it go down again. I mean, I don't want to grab it back, but even if I do, I can start it over because we're not perfect. He's the one that pulls us out. It gives them hope. Are you hearing me, church? Amen. You just have to trust him. Trust him with the process. Trust him to pull you out of that pit. That one day, your bags are all gone. And that God will use you to help other people let theirs go. Oh, come on. There's no greater moment than that. Can I get an amen, church?